What is up my valid peeps, Kadian here. This year is Power Rangers 30th anniversary, and to celebrate it we'll be getting our 30th season, Power Rangers Cosmic Fury, later this year. But what if season 30 of Power Rangers was something different? In today's video I'll be discussing my own idea for a season 30 of Power Rangers. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like, comment, subscribe and share it. Join my Patreon for just £2 a month to see videos early, and let's get started. So I'll be carrying over the continuation aspect of Dino Fury to Cosmic Fury, with it instead being Dino Fury to Power Rangers Grid Fighters. My idea for a season 30 of Power Rangers mainly adapts the Rangers and Mecha of Kikai Sentai Zenkaija and the villains and monsters of Avatar Sentai Don Brothers, with the overarching villain being Lord Zed and the plot synopsis for the 15 episode first half of the show going as follows. With Earth having been peaceful for the last 6 months and Zato having returned, the Dino Fury Rangers head into space to take on Lord Zed and his new Zed Grid, facing new enemies and monsters with past Ranger powers. Finding themselves powerless and separated after their first encounter, the Rangers must gain new powers and reunite as the Power Rangers grid fighters before Zed can succeed in his goal of universal conquest. And there we go! The second half synopsis requires some more stuff to be explained before then, so I'll leave that till later. As the synopsis and my idea imply, the Dino Fury Rangers become the Grid Rangers, armed with new powers, gear and zords. The Sentai gears are adapted as the legendary Ranger gears. Still having the powers of past teams, but now lacking the numbers on them, with the ranger on them in the centre, and only adapting the gears of the 23 teams who got adapted for Power Rangers up till Season 29, not counting the 6 legendary ranger teams that appeared in Super Mega Force. The Gitlinger is adapted as the Grid Fighter Morpher, either lacking or replacing the text on the side, I'm not sure which to be honest. As a minor aside, the Zenkai Buckle is adapted as the Grid Fighter Battle Belt. The show's first five episodes each see the main five reunite as they fight Lord Zed's monsters. And now I'll go over each ranger in the order they return. And quickly, like with the gears, the rangers would lack the numbers on their helmets. Zato remains the leader of the team and the first to gain his Grid Ranger powers as the White Grid Ranger. Harvey changes colour, going from black to red and being the second to return as the Red Grid Ranger, armed with the Mighty Blade and Mighty Shield. Ollie keeps his previous Ranger colour, becoming the Blue Grid Ranger, fighting with the Overdrive Pickaxe. Izzy also changes colour, now being yellow instead of green as the Yellow Grid Ranger and wielding the Wild Claw. Amelia keeps her previous Ranger colour too, now being the pink Grid Ranger, using the Mystic Wand as her signature weapon. She is actually a couple Monsters of the Week as well, though I'll get into that later. In Episode 8, Ion returns now the Gold Grid Ranger, using the Super Mega Grid Morpher to transform and wearing a red version of the Grid Fighter Battle Belt. Unlike the other Rangers, he gets a couple additional forms to start off with, the Zeo Armor and the Samurai Armor. First appearing in episode 12 is the Grid Warden, adapted from Zenkai Red. He's a suit only extra ranger who appears to help the rangers every now and then. A couple of aliens of the new New Lauren species also appear to help the rangers occasionally, starting from episode 14, Blankai and Chiron, who are members of the home planet New Laura's Guard, and have a link to one of the Zed Grid's generals that I'll get into in a bit. As for the first half's swords, four of the rangers actually transform into them themselves. Red becomes the mighty dino grid sword, blue becomes the drive dump grid sword, yellow becomes the wild lion grid sword, and pink becomes the mystic dragon grid sword. The dino and lion grid swords combine to become the dino lion megazord, and the Dump and Dragon Grid Swords combine to become the Drive Mystic Megazord. The Zord pairings can also switch, resulting in the Dino Mystic and Drive Lion Megazords. All four of those combinations can be piloted by the White Grid Ranger, though he's not necessary for the Megazords to function. 
The Gold Grid Ranger pilots his own Crocodile Ship Zord, which can combine with his Samurai and Zeo Droid Zords to make the Crocker Ship Megazord, which can switch between Samurai and Zeo formations depending on which Droid Zord is acting as the head. The Ship Zord can also split into Hover and Bike modes and transform into Bazooka mode that are all controlled by the Droid Zord Duo. That's all of the first half show stuff for the Rangers, so on to the villains! As said before, the Zed Grid led by Lord Zed himself are the main villains of the show. This enemy force is named after a new energy created by Lord Zed after he corrupted a massive untapped supply of Morphin Grid energy he discovered with his own power. Using this new evil energy, Zed creates an army of monsters called Tarnishes and Scourges and giant robots called Colossotrons to take over numerous planets. One of the planets the Zed Grid takes over is the planet Neulora, home to the Neulorans, where he finds a sibling duo of Neulorans who submit loyalty to him as his generals. These are Navicon and Grenarka. Navicon was actually a friend of Blankai and Chiron prior to betraying his race, and Grenarka is the New Loran equivalent of non-binary, which the race actually has a specific term for. I go into a little more detail about the New Loran race in the document I wrote about this project, so go check that out, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. As for the monsters of the week, they are adapted from the Sentai theme Totsuki, whose teams got adapted for Power Rangers up till Season 29 not counting the six legendary ranger teams that appeared in Super Mega Force. These monsters are called Morphin Monsters, and are created when a living being, not already infused with said grid energy, transforms after being infused with said energy. The initial infusion doesn't immediately transform them, rather it turns them evil and puts them under Lord Zed's control. To transform, they shout the transformation phrase of the team the Morphin Monster represents. When transformed, Morphin Monsters can utilise the powers of the past Ranger team they are based on. Unlike the Hitotsuki though, when the Morphin Monsters grow giant, they don't change in name or appearance. I won't go over the names of all of them here, you can check that out in the project document if you're interested, but there are a few notable ones, not all of these are from the first half though. As I said before, Amelia becomes a couple the Turbo-themed Roadburn, and the Wild Force-themed Beastimal. Grenarka becomes the Lost Galaxy-themed Galactusk, and a currently unnamed villain becomes the Ninja Steel-based Shurinobi, the Mystic Force-based Zarkane, and the Operation Overdrive-based Explencher. The Rangers aren't the only ones with Megazords though, the Zekrid has some too though in the first half of the show they only have a couple Megazords, adapted from the first two versions of Battle Caesar Robo, the Grid Hunter Megazord and the Grid Hunter Megazord version 2. Both are piloted by Navicon, and the second is the final boss of the show's first half, where after it's destroyed, he gets mortally wounded and is turned into a cyborg by Lord Zed as a reward for his loyalty. Now enough about the first half of the show, Time for the second half! It's the same length as the first half, and its plot synopsis reads as follows. Now reunited and having seemingly destroyed Navicon in his upgraded Megazord, the Grid Ranger's relentless battle against the Zed Grid continues. When Navicon somehow returns and brings with him a dark copy of the Dino Lion Megazord, the difficulty of the Rangers' battle ramps up drastically. Gaining new powers and facing more Morphin Monsters, the Rangers need all the help they can get in their escalating conflict. Cyborg Navicon makes his debut in the first episode of the show's second half, piloting the Dark Dino and Lion Zed Zords that combine into the Dark Dino Lion Megazord. The Colossotrons also get an upgrade a few episodes in called Advanced Colossotrons. Zato and Ion both get upgrades for their ranger forms, both using the Dragorex gear to access them. The White Grid Ranger Morphin Armor and the Gold Grid Ranger Quantum Armor. The former wields the Morphin Spear in battle and has the ability to grow giant, 
and the latter has the ability to transform and enlarge into the Super Mega Armor Zord. The giant Morphin Armor and Super Mega Armor Zord can combine into the Dragorex Megazord, which can further turn into the Q-Rex Drill inspired Dragorex Drill. The giant Morphin Armor can also combine with the mighty Dino Grid Sword to make the Dino Morphin Megazord. And the Super Mega Armor Sword can combine with the Crocoship Megazord to make its Quantum Formation. About halfway into the second half, the Grid Warden appears with a new weapon for the Grid Rangers. Adapted from the Zenryoku Zenkai Cannon, we have the Grid Buster Cannon. Obviously the interior decal here would have to be changed to only represent the 23 adapted teams plus the White Grid Ranger. A couple episodes later, it's revealed that the cannon can transform into a personal Zord for Zato, the Grid Buster Jet Zord, which can combine with the Mighty Dino, Drive Dump, Wild Lion and Mystic Dragon Grid Zords to become the team's strongest Megazord, the Grid Buster Ultra Zord. I'm definitely keeping its finisher, though that and the transformation would have to be changed to only include the adapted teams. The last 5 episodes of the show feature a few more new things, the Grid Hunter Megazord version 3, a power up for Lord Zed adapted from Don Armage called Emperor Zed, the Zedrex Megazord, and after Emperor Zed's destruction in the final episode, a depowered version of the White Grid Ranger adapted from Zenkaiser Black from Don Brothers. And that's it for my Grid Fighters project. There is some scrapped content for it, which I plan on making a short video for later this month, but that will be Patreon exclusive, so if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to join there for just £2 a month. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know what you thought of my Season 30 idea down in the comments below, like, subscribe and share, and I'll see all your valid peeps next time!